Text questions come in from Gary in Suffolk. Why are the water companies allowed to function without competition? Surely the idea of privatisation is exactly to bring about competition. Uh, the UK water companies are taking us for fools, milking customers to pay shareholders and the boardroom vast sums of money whilst avoiding at all costs any investment. It's a national scandal and should be stopped. Just to give you a little bit of background here, water companies are asking uh, customers to potentially, uh, well, they're saying that they might increase bills by up to 40%, to fund the cost of repairs to sewers in order to end the dumping of sewage in our rivers and seas. Meanwhile, Thames water could be about to collapse, uh, so we read in the papers anyway, because of the scale of its debts. Peter Hitchens. Well, it's, I think, quite clear now uh, that some things should be run by the state and some things should be run privately and that water companies should never have been privatised and should always have been run by the state. The same, I would say, is very much true of the railways and there are probably several other things that, if we could discuss this, we could come up with the same answer. It, I think the, the case for general privatisation, the dogma of privatisation, has been destroyed in the past 20 years and the water companies and what's happened to them is probably the strongest example of that mm. argument and the best experience we shall have. It has to be done. Uh, it's going to be very expensive. Uh, the damage that's been done by these privatisations will have to be reversed by them being taken again into proper, efficient, thoughtful state ownership of the kind that I say that, that uh, British Rail exemplified before it was torn to pieces uh, by a mad dogmatic experiment. Andrew. Um, yeah, absolutely. Look, this was a, a fraud committed against the British people for the last 40 years, unfortunately, and now we're seeing it collapse. Um, the energy, sorry, the water companies um, hiked prices 40% after privatisation. They failed to invest in the infrastructure that they got on the cheap. They sold off some of the assets, the reservoirs for housing development and so on, which is why we haven't got the capacity now to expand as, as the population's grown. Um, and they've loaded the companies with debt. So they've basically asset stripped the companies. Um, you know, so we talk about the cost of taking it back into public ownership. Thames Water's worth nothing. It's got debt. But, but what makes you say that they've asset stripped? What makes you say that they've asset stripped the companies? You could argue that they haven't invested well, enough, but what they have they stripped? They have loaded the companies with debt, yet paying out £3.2 billion pounds worth of dividends to their shareholders in the past 20 years. Right, so they've taken on debt, they're in debt, they're in massive debt, and they've handed out money to private shareholders without investing in the infrastructure whilst jacking up our business. Isn't that it's, the it's fault, theft, Andrew, isn't that, the fault, isn't that the fault to the regulator? But that was what was designed. You know, this was built in. If you'd regulated them properly, and, you know, I, I, I hear people saying, oh, we can regulate them better and find them more. They're bankrupt. What are you going to find? Yeah. You need to take if okay. you ha if you find the other water companies more s sternly for take you know, for pour pouring sewage into our rivers and seas, they're all going to collapse as well. It's like the private okay. okay. railway companies yeah. just me, walk walk away when they yeah. run into trouble. Sure. Let me bring in Nikki. Nikki well, look, we just had a debate about paying for the repair of, of school buildings, and we've talked about you know other investment uh, that, that's needed. And now suddenly the state is suddenly going to be able to to take back the water companies and perhaps the the railways and everything else and put in money and everything else. All you have is a is a tremendous demand. Um, so the, the DEFRA, where Jim aspires to be at Secretary of State, people beating apart the door continuously, saying, can I have investment for this? Can I have investment uh, for that? And this demand and everything else. I'm not going to say there aren't, there aren't issues, that there, there are um, when things are privatised, the structure that's used, the failure of the regulators um, and others. But I think if you compared what the likely investment would be in under state ownership and what it has been, it's significantly higher under privatisation. But yes, in terms of uh, money paid out to, to shareholders, investment that is required, poor regulation, uh, not necessarily the right management. But we are talking about, obviously, the focus on Thames Water. There are a number of water companies, many of whom are run in a far, far better, more sustainable way. Do you not think that <clears throat> one of the fundamental uh, planks of a Tory government though, is, is to allow a return to shareholders? I mean, what is a, yes. what is a reasonable return? Because obviously, you, you, if you're well, going to attract to investment decide, into it? the sector, you're going to have to allow shareholders to earn some level of return. Well, but that's, but that's for the whole that point about, you know, if you believe in uh, capitalism, if you believe in companies, the board has to decide that in terms of what is what the money you keep in the company for future investment and what is it you pay out to the shareholders to encourage them to carry but on it's, to, to It's not capitalism, well. is it, though? Because it's a natural monopoly exactly. you know i can't have another water pipe put well, into my so, so that's so where that's regulation like, well, that's, comes in well, that's, that's, work. you could then say well actually you should follow the electricity model where actually you, we do have a choice about which electricity companies we're we're going to go that's to been noticeable success as well <laughs> hasn't it? Company, but this is more else. the infrastructure well, this yeah. Is about, yeah this is about infrastructure, more and the infrastructure. investment jim uh well i think we're all um looking at the water industry and there is I think, agreement uh, from most people that what happened on privatisation was a national scandal. Uh, the company was handed over uh, at a song. 
they were handed over with with no debt whatsoever uh, and with plenty of assets. And what we've seen is, as Andrew has said, those assets have been stripped away. We've now at debt levels of £60 billion. At the same time, dividends of £72 billion has gone out. The money was not in the system. It's essentially been taken with one hand and piled on with debt in the other. Now, the question comes, well, given where we are, so if there's an agreement that we shouldn't have done it in the first place, well, I'm afraid that is not the world we're in today. The world we're in today is that we have a privatised water industry in England, and of course it's not for profit in Wales, uh, but, but, but in England, and we have to reconcile uh, some of that. And it's complicated. I'm not saying that as an excuse, but it's a reality that there are significant pension fund holders who are investors in water in England. For instance, there are 4 million uh, UK pension fund holders who are investors, including the Mine Workers Pension Scheme, the University Super annuation scheme, the BT scheme, the, the Tesco uh, employee scheme of people who've invested to get a decent pension into into old age. There are also some people who took on privatisation, share options as employees of water companies, of workers. And so it is a bit more complicated. But it's a matter of fact that there is a lot of our shareholdings of English water. There are essentially foreign sovereign... But what's wrong with that? I mean, as long as you've got the right to veto, if you feel that a, a foreign hostile government could have your national assets. But if you're talking about Canadian pension funds, what's the problem? Because in the end, where's that money coming from that pays them what their expectation in terms of a dividend return on one hand, when we have such a gulf in terms of investment required to reduce leakage so that we don't have water shortages? And also, we need to talk about the sewage scandal. There's over 800 yeah. sewage discharges taking place every single day, polluting our rivers, our lakes and our seas. And it's a place of where we live. Literally, the beaches where children build sandcastles yeah. are having raw human sewage the, pumped into national, them. These are national strategic assets. I'll come it's, back to you in a second, Peter. Well, sure, but that gives us a point about, you know, it's, it's been a, a, failure of, a failure of regulation, a failure of demands. You know, there are other industries where the regulator makes it very clear how they expect that industry uh, to, uh, to perform, to behave, to look after the assets and the, uh, the level of return to, to shareholders. We saw at the beginning of the pandemic, for example, where the Bank of England stepped in and said the banks are not going to um, pay out dividends to uh, to shareholders. Uh, they're going to do the right thing by their, their customers. Uh, and I think you'd argue that, by and large, that's what happened. Well, that's basically Labour's plan. So Peter, we... you wanted to... Well, uh, Nicky, remind me when it was that the water industry was privatised. Uh, 1980s. Exactly. Well, it seems to me to have been an awful lot of, of both Conservative and Labour governments since then. And if the regulation was no good, uh, couldn't they have noticed and done something about it? The truth was nobody cared and nothing was done. And we now have a, a national strategic asset. In fact, the water supply to the capital city of this country and its most, uh, its most productive and, and most densely populated area uh, is now under the control of a body which, as far as I understand, is on the verge of bankruptcy. Mm. Uh, and uh, that is not tolerable in a civilised country. And <coughs> we're going to have to do something about it, whatever it costs. I don't think, believe in nationalisation without compensation. If there are shareholders, they have to be compensated. That's part of the cost, and part of the cost which which is which has to be blamed on the on the people who failed. Well, Jim, do you want to come back? I want to ask you, Jim. It isn't a would you nationalise? Yeah. But to the point, it's a matter of having to do it. To the point, on it hasn't had any choice. We have to do something. Be, be, like but to is the it? point on nationalisation, would would Labour government nationalise? Uh, and this is a point. I mean, I can very easily make a, a case for nationalisation, but I think as a point of principle, when it comes, Peter, to your point about compensation for shareholders, as a point of principle, as a working person paying my tax. I don't want to pay twice. I don't want to pay into the system that's taken £72 billion out of the system and then pay them again for walking away when the investment's needed to put it right. They've taken the money and through regulation and government, they should be made to put it right. Now, if they decide to walk away, uh, then that's for them, but we should not be paying them twice. Yeah, the okay, so that, that you made people it responsible have walked away already. Twice. Okay, so you made it clear. You are not. You heard it here first on cross-question. Mm -hmm. Jim McMahon is saying... It, it Bill Pays will not pay twice under Labour government for... Not going to nationalise the water. The shareholders company. will be made to put it right.